Alright, let's go for unrestricted first. Do everything but save. Holy shit. Whoa. Can I... Can I actually access all this information? Alright, well, let's look at Rock ALH84001, which... Actually, maybe it'll tell me. Yeah, there we go. Damn, alright. Get ready for a lot of reading. <clears throat> On August 6th, 1996, proof of ancient Martian life was announced by NASA to the world's media. Based on the identification of microfossils in a Martian meteorite, within a few months of the announcement, President Clinton made a public commitment to the search for extraterrestrial life on Mars. 15 million years ago, an asteroid, an asteroid or impact comet blasted an area of the Martian surface into space. One of the rocks from this ejecta commencing on a wayward orbit which ended in Antarctica in 11,000 BC. This meteorite weighed uh, 4.2 pounds and its materials were formed 4.5 billion years ago on Mars, when rocks were first condensing on Earth. It was discovered in 1984 and labeled Rock ALH84001. See, what? Oh, okay. From the beginning, NASA's claim was a source of contention in scientific circles. But dissenting voices were gradually silenced, as later investigations proved conclusively that fossil bacteria of alien origin were indeed present in ALH84001. Further information. As far back as 1996, evidence of a Martian origin for ALH blah 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 was considerable. The rock contains a heavier form of oxygen than normally found on Earth, and at a level consistent with the Viking probe samples extracted from Mars in 1976. Inside the rock are carbonates, similar to limestone, formed about 3.6 billion years ago. Damn, this is a lot of text. I didn't know this game actually had this much reading. Not that I'm complaining. I like backstory. Within these carbonates are fine-grained magnetite and iron sulfide particles, sim uh, similar chemically and structurally to those produced by bacteria on Earth. On the surface of the carbonates are small oval shapes resembling those discovered on calcite formed by groundwater in southern Italy. The rock shows evidence of liquid water and organic molecules called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons as well as bacterio, uh, bacterial microfossils. Some of the rock's microfossils are egg-shaped and others tubular. The tubular variety described at the time by NASA as worm-like structures no more than a hundredth of the diameter of a human hair. Some of the rock's microfossils are egg-shaped and others rod-like, suggesting a similarity with the ovoid uh, coccus and rod-like bacillus of terrestrial bacteria. The third main type of Earth-like bacteria, a spirillum, was never irrefutably established as present in the rock. In short, ALH was the first strong evidence that there was once bacterial life on Mars. Later research proved NASA's claim correct, Martian life was a reality. Alright, that's one of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. No, sorry, 17. <laughs> oh my god, this is going to be like an entire episode just reading this, but I'm okay with that. Olympus Mons. The 26 kilo um, kilometer high volcano named Olympus Mons is the tallest mountain in the solar system. Three times the height of Everest, it has a base of 600 kilometers, and its complex summit, Caldera, is 85 kilometers in width. It was believed until recently that all volcanic activity was extinct on Mars, but some volcanologists concluded that residual volcanism was still acting, uh, still active under the lower southern slopes of Olympus Mons. Although most experts identified the phenomena, phenomena as thermal springs, it was decided to locate Vita-1 base on the site of a reputed volcanic hotspot at the southern fringe of Olympus Mons. Okay, so I'm in Vita-1 base. So the Vita-1 base that I'm in is on the site of a volcanic hotspot. Interesting. Alright, base PA system. Whenever a member of the staff is not making an address... Uh, address? Address? I'm not sure if you pronounce that address or address. I think it's address. Whenever a member of the staff is not making an address through the PA, Mood has primary control of the system. Although she leaves a standard computer to perform everyday tasks and deliver basic instructions through... Uh... The P... Wait. Oh. 
Let me read that again. Although she leaves a standard computer to perform everyday tasks and deliver basic instructions through the PA in a bland, mid-Atlantic voice, <laughs> informing staff of possible malfunctions and other matters. I don't think that sentence was grammatically correct, but anyway. The PA system has recently been extended to the subterranean excavations. Subterranean excavations? Huh. Excavating inside of... on the site of volcanic activity, is that a good idea? I don't know. But yeah, I guess Mood would be the name of the thing talking in the bland mid-Atlantic voice that always sounds cheery. Decontamination completed. Vita-1 base. Damn. The core of Vita-1 base in its present form was completed on 17th October 2015. Crewed by six men and four women, it's mish... Holy shit, that's all that was there to begin with? Six men and four women? That was small. Its mission was summed up in its name. Vita. Life. Vita-1 was intended above all as a research base for... What? As a re research base for extant Martian life? Did they mean to write extinct? What the hell does extant mean? I don't think that's a word. Okay, well, the base was a, is intended as a extant to research extant Martian life. From its completion in October 2015 to the present time of August 2018, President Allenby has ordered all of the resources of his multinational company, Earth Control, to be placed at the disposal of the Vita project, of which Vita 1 base is the first stepping stone. A second Vita base has just been completed in the Hellas plane, awaiting its first crew, and others are planned. Vita 1, with its present complement of 58 staff. If you counted all of the zombies, I wonder if there actually are 58. Do you think they'd pay attention to the small details? Hmm. All right, complement of 58 staff is heavily overcrowded. Most staff have to use the dorm uh, living units in shifts. Damn. Following company protocols, base director Felici, project director Haraway, and chief supervisor Oba have been allocated single rooms. Although Mr. Oba has recently transferred himself to Arkham Dorm, giving up his room to mining supervisor Mei Lin. Extensions to Vita-1 base are still in progress. Base corridors and certain rooms originally have been number and function titles, but there, but these were renamed after a vote arranged by Haraway after famous streets, squares, and buildings on Earth. The decor of much of the base is neo-retro, with contrasting styles and period details. This was chosen by President Allenby himself to create an environment of diversity for all staff members. The size and sophistication of the base was um, archived by massive... Well, it's archived, what? was achieved by massive funding from Earth Control and the development of revolutionary building technique and material simulations by Babylophony Inc. Oh my god, I need to drink something before my voice disappears from all of this reading. Whew. Well, at least it's giving me an excuse not to wake up the zombie. <laughs> <clears throat> I almost wonder if I should come back to this later, but it's only going to be more and more dangerous to read computers, so no. Okay, Vita Project. The Vita Project was instituted by President Allenby in 2005 to search for physical evidence of extraterrestrial life. Mars is the first step in the long-term project geared to the discovery and analysis of living Martian microorganisms. The enormous funds available to Earth Control allowed the pace of space exploration to accelerate outstripping even the Apollo missions of the 1960s. Mood. The most sophisticated of all info mesh systems is the YX-009 series, and of this series, Mood is considered the most fully conscious and eccentric. The info mesh user for Mood is Andrew Muir, or how do you pronounce that? Muir? I don't know. Whatever, Andrew, who has... Uh, who has borne the stress of frequent meshing with fortitude. Mood may be addressed through the audio walls of Mood chambers, uh, Chamber, but is primarily contacted by a simurial interface chair. What? <laughs> Once the user is seated, he or she will enter a psionic reconstruction of a familiar habitat. Although the user's body will remain seated in a Mood's chamber, their consciousness will be entirely absorbed in a simurial world. What? Okay. 
that totally makes sense. Earth Control. Earth Control is... And Earth Control is funding the Vita Base project, right? Um, Earth Control is best summed up by its logo, a picture of Mars cradled in a pair of human hands, with the slogan, Earth Cares. Earth Control is the aerospace division of Earth Care Unity, the largest multinational company in human history. Under its president, Bernard Allenby, Earth Care Unity has grown from an agronomic corporation specializing in genetically modified food to a commercial empire spanning numerous spheres of interest including agriculture, information technology, arms manufacture, I should be arms manufacturing, but whatever, arms manufacture, bioengineering, and space exploration. One of the main aims of Earth Control is the human colonization of Mars, with a view to terraforming the planet by the end of the 21st century. If successful, this will be followed by the terraforming of Venus. Parallel with these enterprises, Earth Control is dedicated to the search for extraterrestrial life. Now that proof of bacterial life on Mars has been well established, it is the company's policy to find ways to control that life to prevent any possible threat to humans. Uh, too late. <laughs> President Allenby has vigorously denied... Excuse me. President Allenby has vigorously denied any links between Earth Control and BioShield, the division of Earth Care Unity concerned with the development of bacteriological defense systems. Huh... Rumors of a mysterious Thule program associated with psychic research have also been strenuously denied. Foreboding? So, bacterial warfare, basically. Huh. Interesting. Allenby. Bernard Allenby was born in Boston, Massachusetts. On November 30th, 1969, he specialized in biochemistry at Yale, acquiring the first of many doctorates. Awarded by universities such as Oxford, Caltech, and the Sorbonne, Sorbonne, however you pronounce that. In 1995, he founded EarthCare Unity, a corporation dedicated to the conservation of food resources with a particular emphasis on genetic modification. Within three years, EarthCare Unity absorbed over a dozen large bioengineering corporations, and it, by 2002, it had diversified into military and aerospace research. The tabloids started to refer to Allenby as Zeus partly because his estate outside Boston was named Olympus, but chiefly due to his formidable power in business and politics, and his almost godlike ability to grasp the most complex details of his varied and growing empire. I think my voice is starting to go from all of this reading. <clears throat> By 2005, Allenby was in a position to fulfill his lifelong ambition, the quest for life in space. With greater financial resources than the chronically underfunded NASA, he effectively took over the management of space exploration under the... I don't remember how to pronounce that. Aegis? Aegis? Under the Aegis of Earth Control? As Allenby himself said at the time, from Sputnik to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, it took a little more than a decade. Now it's 36 years since the first manned lunar landing, and we still haven't managed to send a human to Mars. Just what the hell's wrong with us? Although personally committed to democratic institutions, Allenby has often been the target of criticism from pro-democracy groups who believe that no single man should wield so much power. They point out that Allenby is in a position to dictate to any head of state if he so wishes. Allenby's response is that if he wanted to dictate to the world leaders, he would have done it by now. However, Allenby has initiated severe sanctions against the more militant opponents, known variously as the underground or the resistance. The Underground. Oh my god. I like backstory, but honestly, I think this is too much of an info dump. But still, I'm going to get through it. We only have to read it once. The Underground is a secretive network of oper uh, operatives within Earthcare Unity who work to subvert the corporation from inside. They claim to represent a democracy which they believe Earthcare Unity is undermining, and they are disturbed by the increasing scope of President Allenby's influence in world affairs. Contrary to their presentation and the tabloids, they are not terrorists, never having harmed any individual directly or indirectly. Acts of computer sabotage are their specialty, along with the publishing of certain company secrets on the internet. Allenby's attitude towards the underground is ambivalent. He finds them an irritation, yet he respects their aims. There is evidence that the underground also has some respect for Allenby's motives, although they distrust, distrust his ability to prevent Earthcare unity from slipping into major abuses of power. Whew. 
bulkheads. In the event of a bacterial outbreak, heavy-duty bulkheads are pre-programmed to seal off sections of the base in order to guarantee, in order to quarantine contaminated areas. <clears throat> Once the bulkheads are lowered, they can only be raised by mood after the designated password is given. If more than seven days have elapsed since the bulkheads were lowered, an InfoMesh user will need to raise them from within a Cymurial interface. Okay, so, let's see. We have alien bacteria. We have apparently some sort of bacterial weapons program going on here. We have a base that is built on top of volcanic activity. A, a hot spot. A site of volcanic activity. And the bulkheads have closed because of a bacterial outbreak. And during the decom decontamination, we were sprayed with some weird noxious fumes that made everyone uncomfortable. I think everything is infected with some sort of alien and possibly weaponized bacteria. That's my guess. And I truly am guessing because I don't remember that part of the story. <clears throat> Margin Mayhem. Martian Mayhem, developed by Bull Bellow Production, is probably the worst video game in the solar system. In spite of that, or maybe because of it, it is highly addictive. We play it all the time, but maybe that's because we're stuck on Mars and we've all gone crazy. Who can ever forget the chainsaw that Earthman Rock Harding carries around in his trouser pocket of the 40-foot nuclear missile launcher he man uh, or the 40-foot nuclear missile launcher he manages to cram into his tiny backpack? Dramatic license is one thing, but those people at Bellow Productions have just got to be taking the piss. By the way, has anyone back there on Earth actually finished the game? I've been I've been wandering around the chamber of shouting spiders for the last two weeks, trying to find the lock for my walrus key. Oh, I'm scowly, by the way. Shouldn't be putting all this stuff on official files, but hey, what the hell? Tags. There are 11 color-coded tags, at least one of which base members are expected to wear on their wrist at all times. These tags serve as keys. They're key cards. <laughs> to open specific doors, but they also function as security devices to inform surveillance systems on the exact whereabouts of any tag owner. All tags, when activated on a locked door, send out a pulse which releases the locking mechanism. Alright, already knew that. Almost done. InfoMesh. InfoMesh is a generic name applied to neural computer networks extrapolated from the personalities of living people. These neural networks interact directly with the user's mind within a shared mental world known as a simorality. All InfoMesh, all InfoMesh systems possess consciousness, but the nature and degree of this consciousness is a matter of pure speculation. With these advanced systems, telepathy has finally become a scientific reality. Only skilled InfoMesh practitioners, known as meshers, are able to communicate on a telepathic level with these sophisticated networks. There is some evidence that accomplished meshers have a psychic ability, but this is a matter of debate. What is certain is that any normal person is, un is likely to suffer severe mental trauma if they engage in meshing. The most intelligent of all InfoMesh systems, in the blah 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 series, and of the series Mood is considered the most fully conscious and eccentric, the Vitabase InfoMesh user for Mood is Andrew Muir, who has borne the stress of frequent meshing with fortitude. I think I already read that in the article on Mood. Okay, hold on a second. Go back. There is some evidence that accomplished meshers have a psychic ability. Didn't Kenzo, me, didn't he say that he can hear the thoughts of that levitating zombie? I, I think he's the mesher. I think he's the computer guy of the crew. <clears throat> Martian subsurface life. Up to about three billion years ago, Mars was warm and lush. Vast rivers rushed down such valleys as the Vallis Marinarinus. I don't know how to pronounce that. The climate changed when the planet's orbit altered, causing the seas to evaporate and the temperature to fall. Martian life retreated underground, drawing energy from hot springs and thermal areas. Ooh, this base is built on a hotspot. This is me talking, not the text. This base is built built on a hotspot, and that must be why there's life there, because it retreated to the hotspot. Okay. Okay, got it. Under the surface of Mars, there's a layer of permafrost 10 meters deep. Back in the 20th century, it was postulated that if life still existed on Mars, then it was likely to be found at a depth of 50 meters or more. It had already been noted that the Red Planet possesses the six elements essential to life. Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Mars Surveyor 2005 
proved that microorganisms once thrived on Mars, but living bacteria were not discovered until the establishment of Vita Base 1. Living ma Martian bacteria, like their ancestors, fall in, uh, fell into the three main types of terrestrial microbes. Uh, bacillus, rod, coccus, ovoid, and spirulum, spiral. These were uh, found mostly 60 meters or more underground, apart from thermal spring locations where living bacteria happen unearthed less than a meter under the surface. A curious feature of the three types of Martian microorganisms is that they have been observed to bond into a tripartite yeah, tripartite, tripartite structures of rod ovoid spiral. Hmm. So, oh my god. I'm pretty damn tired of reading at this point. I've been reading for almost a half hour. Since breakthrough since breakthrough day, a number of weapons have been shipped in from Earth in response to a request from base director Felici, who voiced Excuse me who voiced concern that standard firepower was required to prevent nervous crew members from <clears throat> resorting to the highly dangerous Lucifrage emergency flare guns. Lucifrage? That sounds horrible. Sounds nasty. Which were intended purely as distress flares for members encountering life-threatening situations on the, Mar on the Martian surface. The only non-standard weapons on the base is the Sayonara? Sayonara? <laughs> Seriously, Sayonara is the name of a fucking Scion gun? Oh my god. Powered by a Scion cell, which fires psionic pulses and can be used only by an experienced info mesher. Although powerful, the drawback to the Sayonara is that it drains the user of energy and should be used with care. Two more. We're almost done. Chronology of Martian Exploration. Alright. Uh, let's just go by year. 1965. Is that Mariner or Mariner? I'm going to go with Mariner. Mariner 4 and Mariner 6 achieved first successful flyby of Mars. November 1971. Mariner 9 entered Martian orbit. March uh, 1974. Mars 6 orbiter lander sent back some data before contact lost during landing sequence. June and August 1976. Viking 1 and Viking 2 orbiter landers achieved Martian orbit. In the following months, the landers analyzed soil samples. Analysis showed no proof of Martian life. 1984. Martian meteorite labeled ALH discovered in Antarctica. August 1996. Public announcement of... Microfossil forms in ALH. November 1996, Mars Global Surveyor launched on search for water on Martian surface and subsurface. December 1996, Pathfinder mission overtook the Global Surveyor and landed on July 4, 1997, releasing a six-wheeled mini rover to study rocks and soil. July 1998, Planet B, a Japanese probe... Wait, a Japanese probe that was called Planet B? Why would a probe be called a planet? Anyway, launched to study the Martian atmosphere. December 1998, first stage of NASA's Mars Surveyor 98 mission launched into Martian orbit to study climate. Oh god. January 1999, lander, stages, uh, lander stage of Mars Surveyor 98 launched to probe polar samples of ice and urban uh, carbon dioxide. July 2005, Mars Surveyor 2005 launched to acquire Martian soil samples and return them to Earth under strict quarantine conditions. Results verified the existence of Martian microfossils. August 2009, first Mars landing... Oh my god, I'm not even reading right anymore. First manned landing on Mars in Zeus 1 near the Olympus Mons, extremity of the Valles Marinus. Marineris. This was the first space mission financed by Allenby, president of Earth Control, who gave his own affectionate nickname of Zeus to the program. The astronauts took soil and rock samples and left the rudiments of base build, uh, rudiments of a base building kit on the surface. Oh my god. Okay. September 2010. NASA NASA microbiologists discovered clear evidence of fossilized bacteria in the Zeus 1 samples. Spurring America to join with Japan and Europe in a concerted investigation of the Martian subsurface from a permanent base. Earth Control replaced NASA as regulator of the space program. 
December 2011, Zeus-2 landed on Mars and began the piecemeal construction of a Martian core sampling base. Seven construction missions followed in quick succession, succession over the next ten months. October 2015, Martian base, named Vita-1, completed with initial crew of ten to be replaced in six-month shifts. Air supplied partly by filtration up to, oh my god, up to... 50% of food supplied by a primitive arboretum. Arboretum? 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 I don't know. June, November 2016. Vita 1 extended and crew increased to 30 members. Construction of Vita 2 commenced on the Hellas Plain. July, September 2017. Further extension of Vita 1. Crew increased to 44 members. August 2018. Base crew reached maximum level of 58 members. Headed by base director Felici. Chief Supervisor Oba and Pro Project Director Haraway, or Haraway, I don't remember how to pronounce her name. Further extension of base underway, preparation in hand to transfer 20 crew members to Vita 2 on the Hellas Plane. Seriously? There's a blank page. Okay. My voice is seriously going. Mars, last one. And I don't even think I'm breathing correctly. Like, I'm reading it so fast that I'm actually out of breath. <clears throat> Fourth planet from the sun at a mean distance of 200, 200, uh, 227.9 million kilometers. Diameter, 6,794 kilometers. Martian day, 24 hours, 37 minutes, 22.6 seconds. Martian year, 687 days. This is an interesting list of trivia about Mars. Okay, uh, mass, 0 0.107, that of Earth. Volume, 0 0.15, that of Earth. Surface gravity, 0.38, that of Earth. Atmosphere, 95% carbon dioxide, with most of the remaining 5% composed of nitrogen and argon. Mean surface day temperature, minus 23 degrees centigrade. Damn, that's cold. Polar ice caps contain water ice and carbon dioxide ice. Water present in extensive underground aquifers. Satellites. Phobos on inner orbit, uh, Dimus on outer orbit, both are small, irregular ellipsoids. Ooh, I love irregular ellipsoids. They're my favorite. Further information. Mars, named after the Roman god of war, with its attendant moons, Phobos and Dimus, Dimus, fear and terror, is a cold, inhospitable world with an unbreathable atmosphere of 95% carbon dioxide and mere trace elements of oxygen. Without an air supply, a human would expire on this world in a matter of seconds. The highest temperature recorded in the equatorial regions at noon is plus 25 degrees centigrade, although that, with a thin atmosphere, this plummets to minus 110 degrees centigrade at night. Damn! That's cold. Without a heat suit, arrival on Mars is possible only for a matter of hours. Uh, survival, sorry, survival on Mars. Additionally, all heat suits are pressurized as the Martian atmospheric pressure is a mere 9 millibars, far below the level required to prevent a fatal decompression of the human body. Mars is divided <clears throat> Mars is divided roughly into the northern hemisphere with its flatter younger terrain and the southern which is pitted with craters and scarred with rift valleys above which rises huge volcanoes as Pavanus Mons and Acreus Mons what tallest of all Martian volcanoes is Olympus Mons three times the height of Mount Everest this mountain is situated at an extremity of the 4.5 thousand kilometer long Valles Marinus Marineris Rift Valley, which has a maximum width of 600 kilometers and a maximum depth of 7 kilometers. Holy shit, I don't need to know any of this, but why am I reading it? I don't know. But I'm already invested, so what the hell, let's keep going. Dust storms of a severity unknown on, uh, on, on, the. Oh my god. Let's try this again. Dust storms of a severity unknown on Earth are common in all areas of the planet, scouring and eroding the surface. The face of Mars is a form of wind sculpture. The polar ice caps are... Jesus. The... <laughs> the... <laughs> Why did they put this in? It's like they just copied the Wikipedia article about Mars into this text. The polar ice caps are composed of a thick coating of water ice and carbon dioxide ice. Liquid water can be found in extensive aquifers at depths of more than 50 meters below the permafrost. Thermal springs, deep underground, have been identified in all Martian regions, occurring most frequently in the vicinity of Olympus Mons. It is in or near these thermal springs that living bacteria have been discovered. 
NASA's statement in August 1996 that fossil microorganisms were present in the Martian meteorite labeled blah 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 was validated 10 years later by the Mars Surveyor 2005 mission which proved that bacterial life once existed on Mars. The Vita Project went one step further. It discovered that alien life still thrived under the, for under the forbidding Martian surface. Thank God. I'm realizing that I do not have proper breath control because I'm actually getting lightheaded from reading this, which means I'm not breathing properly. So hold on, I'm going to be right, bra right back and catch my breath. We're done. Thank God. Be right back. Alright, I am back, and my voice has slightly recovered. But it might be just about to go again, because I just realized something. Yes, I have read all of the articles, all the topics here. But... That was only under unrestricted. What about local? Well, let's try restricted first. Wait, what? What is this? Password. So it has to be three. Uh. Damn it. Okay, well, I don't think I have anybody's. <clears throat> what have we got on local? Oh, thank God. Okay, good. Nothing to read, really. Alright, so this is telling me what's in all of the... Whoops. That's telling me what's in all of these storage containers. Okay, well, that doesn't really matter, does it? No, I mean, if I can get to the containers, then, well... I'll get them if I get to them. I guess maybe if, like, you've lost an item or something, you can use that to hunt it down, maybe? I'm guessing that's what that's for. Okay, there we go. So this is going to let... Who is this going to let out? It's either Matlock or... Karn, or Kern, whatever his name is. It's one or the other, I'm not sure which. So, yes, override. Oh, there we go. It was Kern. You're out of the box now, Karn. Oh god, the no. Decontamp 3 door won't respond. We'll have to find a way to unlock Decontamp 3. Is she gonna wake up? Oh god, fucking shit. Okay, use computer, use computer now. I need to save. I've been playing this game for about an hour and 40 minutes, and I still have not saved once. If the game crashed, all of my progress would be gone. So, let's save. Martian Mayhem 2. Wait a minute, can, can you seriously play the game? I do, I do not remember playing the game at all. Can you actually play it? Let me save first. Alright. Oh, I get to name it. Uh, save 1? I don't know. Alright, let's play Martian Mayhem. How the... <laughs> You'd better get your fun together, Gloria Feist. The outer monster of the inner ring is on its way across the Martian surface to kick our butts, but good. Maybe you'd better stay out of the way, you being a woman and all. When the outer monster gets here, we're gonna be in deep shoe polish. Listen, Rock Harding, as a 19-year-old modern independent, Woman, who is top notch <laughs> government scientist and karate expert, I strongly object to your gender stereotyping, which has no place in the second decade of the 21st century. Just let me blast at that outer monster galoot with my ultra mega death bazooka, and I'll show it what an LA woman is made of. Hey, Gloria, you're right. Men and women are equal. I kind of never thought of it like that before. How about we take turns shooting at the outer monster, signaling the alternation of gunfire by pressing the button with the thumb icon on it that we have <laughs> on all our guns. Okay, Rock. I'm ready for mayhem. Here comes the monster right now. And I'm gonna lick it. Arse. What, me? 
What the hell was that? And that thing, it said to, to restart, press like, hold like five different keys, like control and tab and stuff. I wonder if holding that would actually do anything. As much as I want to try it, I don't want to do it while recording, because I'm worried it's going to cause my computer to explode or something. <sighs> so, okay. The first zombie has woken up. And now it's time to go. Here we go, I'm going to go out the door as fast as possible. Oh god. Get off me, get off me, get off me, fuck you! Run! Uh, can she come through the door? I don't think she can. Okay, I think I got bit, right? That's weird. I saw blood come out of his neck, but according to his health meter, he hasn't been hurt. Okay. Well, obviously, as this character, I cannot progress right now because I haven't gotten any new key cards or anything like that. So the only one who can progress is... You! Wait a minute, am I... Either this is the same sort of hallway or I'm in a place that... Kenzo was just in. <clears throat> Where am Martin I? Martin Khan here. Can anyone hear me? There's oh. something waiting for us in this base. I can feel it. Something in the scent of the air. And a special kind of silence. Bolt block 779 locking mechanism. Looks like the lock's been deliberately jammed from the inside. Damn. Guess I'm not getting that open anytime soon. Alright, down the hallway it is. Please don't wake up. Please don't wake up. Please don't wake up. What the hell stopped my watch? 4864? Uh, 64 minutes past. 48 o'clock? You, you gotta be kidding. Uh... I don't know how that could be, but I'm guessing that's some sort of a password. Gonna write it down. I've already got Pandora as a password to... something. Wasn't the access to the special files for the different crew members, wasn't that a four... character password? Well, I'm sure it's not going back into that room to find out, so who cares? Green tag required. God, they're all going to start waking up soon, I know it. I just don't know when. What is that search? Was there a search back here? I thought I saw a surge. It must have been for the body. This guy's got three bullets in him. What happened here? Group hysteria? I noticed that the people are commenting on the fact that they see dead bodies, but they're not commenting on the fact that they seem to be zombies. Like, they have fucking claws instead of fingers. Don't any of them find that a bit strange? Wouldn't that be alarming? Well, that's a body right in front of the camera. By the decomposition of the bodies, they probably died around the time of the last transmission to Earth. Weird thing is, they're like human freezers. I can feel the cold coming right out of them. Hmm. Park Lane... Ooh. Park Lane Hatch. Maybe that's what the password's for. 4864. 
Weird Hot damn. Our passcode got into my watch. I've heard strange stories about the main computer in this base. Funny, I was just thinking that. I was thinking maybe it was mood. Alright, I got my green card. Got a health boost. And an anti-toxin. What the hell do I use an anti-toxin for? All right, well, let's see if he actually has a comment for the health boost. He doesn't either. Okay. He also doesn't have a comment for the antidoxin. Uh, why is part of the hatch stuck on the left side of the screen? Um, I demand a patch for this immediately. Even though the game's 13 years old and the company that made it doesn't exist anymore, this needs to be patched right now. Yeah, what the hell? Just the part of it just gets left. Huh. Purple tag required. Okay, let me find out where I am. Purple tag required, and this is the Park Lane hatch, correct? Park Lane. Okay, I see where I am. I'm almost at the end of that main thread in the middle bottom. Right, so that green room is just back a bit. Got a vac tube here. Which means I can now switch stuff between Kenzo and... God damn it, I keep forgetting his name. Karn? Kern? I think it's Karn. Right, so I can give the green tag to uh, Kenzo. What the hell is that noise? It sounds like something boiling. Is someone making soup? Mmm, I could go for some soup right now. Oh, shit. Uh, maybe I'll get lucky twice? <laughs> 4864? Nope. Nope. <laughs> um, I don't believe I have any other passwords other than Pandora, which is not a four-character number, so... Yep, I'm boned. Seriously, what is that noise? It sounds kind of like soup. It sounded like boiling, but now it just sounds like water. Like a lake. Is... Wait, this is the purple door, right? Purple tag required. Yep. Alright, so green door is back here. I think. Somewhere. This one? Green tag required. Aha. I like it when a door opens. To <laughs> you and me both. Oh yeah. Oh wait, is that Okay. <laughs> I thought it was a zombie standing up. Never mind, it's in a chair. Oh yes, thank you, game. The fuck is that noise? Oh, it's the sound of slides moving. But yeah, see, this is why I don't like fixed camera angles in games, typically. Because shit like this happens, where there's a zombie in a room, and it scares the hell out of you, and then the camera angle switches to behind a fucking couch where you can't see it. Oh, there's two. Well, this looks like it's some sort of a rec room. I see a dartboard, and there's a couch, and it looks like there's some games. Dartboard. One of them Brit games. Never played it, never will. <laughs> okay. I hate damn Brit games. How the fuck is that a British game? I mean, I don't know the dartboard's origin, but it's certainly not exclusive to Britain anymore. So... Yeah. Fucking game racist. I'm like five feet away from the dartboard over by a dead body, and yet it's still giving me the option to examine dartboard. 
Neo Retro Decor, a mishmash of styles from all over the place. The entire base was decorated in clashing designs supposed to supply visual variety for the base members. Doesn't do anything for me. Uh, the decor is kind of interesting looking. I mean, it certainly is unique, I'll give it that. Ooh. Ah, study drawer key. Okay, so that would be for Kenzo, I think. Dun 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 I wonder how long it goes on for, or maybe it just repeats. Three blind mice. You trying to tell me something? <laughs> I think it just repeats. Alright, uh... Yeah, study drawer key. I don't know if that person's room that Kenzo was in was the study. I mean, it was someone's personal quarters, so I don't think it would be, but then again... I don't know. Maybe. Oh my god, he's obviously gonna wake up, that fucking zombie. But when? The anticipation is killing me. Oh no. No, 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 no. There's a green tag on the zombie. Fuck no, as soon as I pick that up, it's gonna wake up, I know it. Nope. It literally has to be, because they obviously need you to have that card. And I don't think you can search bodies after they have awoken. So, <laughs> there's no way I can wake up if I don't take the item. Nope, 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 not gonna take it. Holy crap. Game's chest, would that be this? When it comes to picking locks, I was taught by company expert. Oh, of course! The black man can pick locks. Racists. Use game's chest with. The hell would I use There's it with? There's a way of opening this game's chest. Just need to turn my hand to the right thing. The hell is that supposed to mean? I need to turn my hand to the right thing? What? Well, nothing I have right now is going to do it, that's for sure. There's a way of opening this. I keep thinking I should be able to read all of these documents on the floor, but apparently I can't. Ooh, what is this? Or what are these? A pop gun and a biosensor. The hell do they do? A pop gun that fires one of those rubber sucker things? I'm gonna look real hard running around with a pop gun. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's gonna do me any good anytime soon. Biosensor, low on energy. Hmm. Do we need to charge it before I can use it? N nope. I think... Wait, is there something on the biosensor? Yeah, I think the biosensor might be used to tell where your other people are. Because remember, you're not supposed to get close to each other. Stay alone, stay alive. One of the mission directives. So I think this might be used to tell, to tell where they are. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My green card. Wait, it... I used my green card to get in here and it used the card up? What? That doesn't... I, what? 
They're not disposable. They're not like one-time tickets. You're supposed to use them to get into a place by wearing it on your wrist or something, right? Why the hell is it gone? Okay, I guess that's why I need another one. Because it's gone. <laughs> it got eaten by the door. Okay. Well, let's do this. Alright, come here. Fuck. Get off me! Oh god, I saw the blood. Close, 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 close! Did it close? It closed. Whew. Okay, is he hurt? Once again, I saw the blood splurt. Spurt, but he's not hurt. Maybe you get one spurt before you hurt? I don't know. Anyway. Okay. I believe I'm above the purple door. I, I think I just came from the green door right above the purple door in the middle bottom. So, yeah, let's just keep looking for a green... Another green door. Oh, whoa. There's the biosensor. Why did it decide just then to show up? Whoa, uh, now it's gone. Huh? Well, uh, now it's back. Okay. Alright, yeah, so there's a life sign. And the game just crashed. Well, shit. And my last save was from Kenzo, because you can't save anywhere, you have to save at a terminal. Okay, I'm gonna have to do... wow. I mean... Random crashes are going to mean that I have to redo a lot of stuff because of the save system. But, on the other hand, I did get about two hours without a crash, so... I don't know. Anyway, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Let me explain what's happening right now. So I just went back, loaded my save game, and replicated every single thing that I did from before. You know, took the same route, got the same items. And along the way, I, I had a vague recollection of something being fucked up with the biosensor. Like, I remember there being something wrong with it, and it caused me issues before. And I think that might be right, because now when I, I just... This is the exact area where it crashed before. And look what it did this time. It's totally fucked. I can't move. I could press escape to see what happens, but I don't dare do that yet. Uh... What the fuck? <laughs> I think I need... Okay, maybe I'm fine. I was going to say I think maybe I need to go back and do it all again, but this time don't equip the biosensor because I don't think you need it. I think it's just used to help you tell where other people are. But it looks like it just cured itself. I don't know. Let's try it. Wow, okay. I don't... I'm not going to use that thing again. Fuck that. Bolt block seven seven nine. <clears throat> okay, so what was I actually going to do? I believe I was going to give the green card to Kenzo. Yeah. Yep, that's the only thing I can do. Give the green card to Kenzo and also give him the key to see if that'll open up that drawer. So let's figure out how this vac tube thing works. All right, where's the nearest vac tube? <clears throat> Let's test that dodge out again. Uh. Yep, I'm never using that. Is there a way to instantly turn around? Oh shit, there is! If you hold down control and press back. It looks ridiculous. <laughs> Wonderful animations!
Okay, green jag, and study drawer key. All right, it's going it's going to go up to something. Fuck if I know what. Maybe where was the vac tube? Oh god, please tell me this thing isn't going to wake up. I, I honestly do not remember where the vac tube is. Is it on the map? I don't think they're on the map. Nope. Whoa. Oh, whoops. I pressed escape twice. Resume. Oh shit. Oh shit. I think it's in here. Yes. That's not the vac tube. In fact, is it? Could I possibly meet up? No, 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 there's a bulkhead in the way. That's right. Vac tube. Oh, vac tube. The hell was that vac tube? Seriously, it's all the way over here? Yeah, I think this is the bulkhead that the other guy's behind. Oh. Maybe you can just access it from any one of them, and you just have to suck it down? Alright. Alright, study drawer key. Alright, so where am I on the map? Because I need to go somewhere with a green card. Okay, I believe... God, I wish I had a mouse pointer so I could actually point at something. I am be I believe I'm right on State Street. Yes, yeah, so I think if I go back a bit, the first door I'm going to hit should be a green door. Oh shit, that's a bulkhead. Hmm. Well, I'll just try all the doors. Maybe it's this one. Green tag required. Ooh. You don't say. Uh. Nope. Just kidding. I think that was someone who'd hang themselves. Yep. The hell is this? A whoopee cushion? It's a deflated Mars hopper. What? Ugh. That's a grim scene. Alright, well, I guess she can't hurt me. So I'll just go right up to her. She can't hurt me, can she? I mean, she's tied down. Oh, that's what's down there? A Bible? Ooh. <laughs> the icon for the deflated Mars hopper looks like a pile of primordial ooze. Of all the sights I've seen so far, this is the saddest yet. And I express my sadness with my monotone voice. But I say it very quietly so it sounds dramatic. Alright. Maybe there's something scribbled in the Bible? I'm gonna get away from the body before I read the stuff, yeah. I feel more comfortable. Yeah. <gasps> ah, there we go. I feel better. And the star fell blazing from heaven, and fell upon a third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is Wormwood. Mm. Wormwood is Chernobyl in Russian, but that's probably just one of those things. Wormwood. I'm guessing that's a password. 
I don't know whether it is or not, but I just wrote it down. Three notes. Nothing of interest on them, but a sturdy paper clip can come in handy. Indeed. I don't know if Kenzo has any lockpicking skills. Wait a minute. Maybe I need to give this to the other guy and he can lockpick that box, that game box thing. A sturdy paper clip could come in handy. In the right hands. Mine may not be the right hands. Well, that just made it obvious. That's exactly what I need to do. Alright. This... Her name is Dieta Mentz? The hell kind of a name is Dieta? Standard issue microquarter. This is the last testament of Dieter Mentz. Born July the 2nd, 1991, in Heidelberg. About to die, August the 8th. 2018 on Mars. If you kill yourself to escape damnation, isn't that justified? I think so. I hope so. I won't let them get to me. I won't let them turn me into one of them. <laughs> They're battering at the door. No escape that way. The only way out is the rope. Hanging from the ceiling. I've made my peace with God. If anyone should hear this, I pray that you're not hearing it in this terrible place. If you are, pray. Pray, hut. Something very, very old has returned. It's a disease. And it sinks. God be with you. Okay, one other thing I remember about this room is that I think there's something else you can pick up. And I remember, like, there was one point where I just couldn't progress in the game, and when I think I looked at a walkthrough, and that's when I found out there was something else in this room that you can pick up. So let's just skip the part where I get stuck at something, and let's just pick up the damn item, wherever it is. And I'm not sure where. Where is it? I think it's in one of the exercise machines. Ooh, is this... Nope. Nope. Is it the ball? What the hell? I'm literally stepping on the image of the ball. Where? Here. Yep. Open exercise bike. See? This is how not to design a game. Is it any wonder that I got stuck at this point? Or stuck because I didn't realize there was an item here? Like, why would I not... Not think to examine this exercise bike when it's totally out of the way and looks the same as all the other exercise bikes that I can't examine. But no, they decided to make this one special. Hmm. <laughs> it's so special, in fact, that when the writers were thinking of what the character could, what kind of comment the character could make on it, they thought for hours, and what they came up with was. Hmm. Drive belt. Don't know what the hell that goes to, but it's for something. Okay, now my work here is done. Alright, so I have another green card. I am... Okay, where's another green room? Uh... Uh... I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if there's another green room that I can access right now, but I do know there's two things I can do. Okay, I can try the um, study drawer key on that room where the first zombie reanimated, and I can send this paperclip over to the other guy and have him lockpick that game's box. So let's do both. Let's first do the study drawer key. Well, I need to send him the paperclip first. I'm not going to do the paperclip, but I'm going to send it first. Uh, which way did I come from? I think... Yeah, I think the vac tube is over here. Yep. Definitely over here.
Okay. And then let me just confirm that that worked. Yes. Okay, now let's go use the study key thing. Actually, wait a minute. I'm going to be trapped in a very small room with a zombie trying to eat my face. Is trying to lock... Is trying to open a drawer in that room a good idea? No, I mean, I can do it, I think. But I think I'm going to wait until this character has a gun. So, yeah, let's actually switch to the lockpick guy and let's go back there. Where was it? Oh, it wasn't here. Purple tag required. I see there's still a display error on the left side of the screen. 